Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Mad Sounds Podcast. My name's Mark, and this is sort of part two of the conversation that uh, we started last week and was intended to just be one episode, but this was basically an extended tangent of when, in the middle of what was going to be what you've been listening to lately, I brought up listening to the latest Train album, and it just kind of snowballed on and on from there until it became its own... <clears throat> train wreck you could say i break this thing down track by track to johnny who had not heard the album at this point i'm pretty sure he still hasn't but after the recording of this i did uh play him uh play that song and uh little sections of a couple other things i think uh, we had this weird thing where uh afterwards because of uh his laptop speaker settings i could actually talk to his amazon alexa thing so I ended up just requesting all kinds of uh, all kinds of wonderful stuff like uh, Elton John's cover of Johnny B. Good, which was mentioned in the last episode, uh, among other things. You can get the gist of it from there. So yeah, things start pretty uh, normal, I'd say, but then things kind of take a turn when some of the we- crazier uh, lyrics in Pat Monahan's head come into account. There are a couple references to that weird religious speaker I talk about in the past episode. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Uh, download it on iTunes. Subscribe on uh, YouTube or subscribe on iTunes too. Subscribing is an option on both things. I just remembered that. Uh, if you're listening on one format, try the other one. It's just a nice little back and forth thing going on. Listen to the past episodes so you can get a little bit more context on this conversation i definitely recommend that uh that is a little bit more straightforward as far as the format of uh, of mad sounds and uh yeah i hope you guys enjoy later Okay, but moving on from an album that we thought was kind of confusing, let's move out of that and into the new Train album. Okay. I mean, I haven't listened to it, but... <laughs> I just need to talk about this with someone because I came to the realization that... T- and I think I mentioned this on Twitter a-, a little bit, but I really want to get into it more. What I realized is that Pat Monahan is the Tommy Wiseau of music. <laughs> Why, Mark? <laughs> Because he he's like he's he's kind of earnest in what he's going for, but it's just like there's so many just like baffling like misunderstandings of the basic fundamentals of what he does and these weird thought processes that go into these songs and it's just it's like I don't go into a train album now expecting it to be good. I just wanna I just want to be taken for the ride, you know. It's funny you mention that, because, like, I've never been a Train fan, like, ever. But at work the other day, someone had said, and someone else agreed to them by saying, yeah, I like old Train better than new Train, and I'm like... You know what? I I can see that, because before getting into this into this new album, I checked out their first album from, like, 1998. It's actually yeah. pretty legit. I mean, I'm sure. I mean, like, like I've heard some of the singles from that because like it's got it's got a little bit more of like a like um I don't want to say rootier approach, but like by by you know the standards of what you know trained by now. But yeah, you know, you, you, I can see you know maybe fans of like I don't know Counting Crows or like maybe some Ryan yeah, Adams or that like, was their you know, vibe. You know that that, that sort of that, that that's that sort of vibe in the in the what you'd expect in the '90s. And Pat wasn't straining his voice all the yeah. time, yeah, like he is now. And, like, they went on these kind of longer jams and stuff. It was cool. You definitely saw a little bit of those weirder tendencies on a couple tracks. But he mo- but he mostly kept it together. Uh, mostly. Mostly. Emphasis on mostly. Mostly. Uh, then, then, you know, they basically kind of evolved into a boring adult contemporary as they went on that first run. And then some kind of synapse must have went off in his brain around the end of the 2000s. Some nerve ending must have snapped, you know, because then, you know, oh my god, like, you know, you guys know. You know. And, and Hefty bag. And the funny, <laughs> hefty bag. Uh, 
I got I I hear uh hey so, whole sister like on an almost daily basis because of this pre programmed playlist in the place I work at. He's so thug. He's That's so the line I was thinking of. thug. Chest hair. I just but here's the thing. So there was that, and then the next album, California 37, you had Drive By, and like, weirdly enough, I don't mind 50 Ways to Say Goodbye, as as dumb as it is. And, and like, a lot of the other songs on that, you know, it varies, obviously. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't quite reach those heights, or those lows, should I say, as as Drive By. Then the next album, Bulletproof of Picasso, which I did a review of with Spectrum Pulse, and it was weird because I was expecting to have that same kind of reaction that I got with... The Save Me from San Francisco and uh, California 37 stuff. Like, yeah, let's go line by line on all this crazy stuff this guy's saying. And it was just kind of boring. Like, it, like, it was, like, it was way too normal to have the uh, quote-unquote appeal of newer train stuff. But it was also too sanitized to actually be, like, actually good. Like, the first train album. So yeah. it just kind of sat in this odd middle ground where you, there wasn't really too much to say. But this one, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> and, and and before that last one, this one, he, they had the Led Zeppelin cover album. They also had an album called Christmas in Tahoe. Yeah, yeah. Uh oh, and also like uh, there's like six members of the band now apparently when it was like a trio before, and there's like five pieces before. I don't even know. Um, so this album, a girl, a bottle, a boat. Yeah. This. This is the trainiest train album to ever hit the tracks and then fall off immediately. I mean, is this it? is the like this is the ultimate in what goes on in that brain. <sighs> Let me I can go track by track on this thing. I, I have mean, the booklet from when I rented this at the library. I'm looking at the I'm looking at the entry on Rate Your Music cuz this is oh what boy. I do. Uh, it's av- it's averaging at a 1.59 rating. So victim um, of love league then. Yeah. Well, it's 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 lower than the and then divide by Ed Sheeran. So I thought that was okay. I mean, we we can go we, into that more later on. Yeah. Um, the cover alone makes me not want to listen to it because like it looks like something I would see plastered like somewhere in Middle America. Like I'll just be driving oh, along yeah. the highway out here in Indy. And I'll just see, like, the new train album, A Girl, A Bottle, A Boat, and I want to just drive my car off the late, off the next bridge. <laughs> yeah, because it's the kind of thing where it's like, you know that, I mean, and I, you know, as much as I hate broad elitist statements like this, screw it. Like, anyone who would rate this album more than an 8 out of 10 didn't, doesn't listen to more than five albums a year. You and know wh- that. Why the fuck... Why do they keep their name written like this? I don't know. But the I mean, logo? it makes sense on their first couple of logos because they were like that rock band that had that root to your sound. But now that they're a pop band, like you got to redesign your logo because you look like like you're trying to make these pop songs with a logo that looks like it's written by a five year old with a crayon. <laughs> like, well, well, I mean, it it fits with the lyrics. So. I'm, well, yeah, because Pat Monahan's a fucking nut job. Like, <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he wrote the theme song for that upcoming sequel to the Nut Job. So, <laughs> I just, I just let's get into this track by sure track. Let's shall talk we? about an album I have not listened to. I'll tell you everything you need to know. All right. So, first track, drink up. This song wrote checks that the rest of the album couldn't cash and that it actually sounds pretty good. Like, it's it's got kind of a neat little bass groove going on, you know? And it's kind of it's like a decent kind of typical pop song that on most albums wouldn't really stand out that much, but it's a fine enough opener. Yeah. The only thing, the only line that's really weird about it is the, t- is the chorus, uh, which is just, drink up, drink up, write your name on a cup. What? <laughs> what? Which, well, here's, the th- here's the thing that hit me. Like, when you write your name on the cup at a party, what that tells me is that you're not drinking consistently. No, you're, like, taking like you're, you're setting it down to, like, maybe, I don't know, play a board game or something. Yeah. So, these, these statements contradict each other. Well, no, also, I mean, if you're at a big party, like, if you're at, like, a big raging, a raging cager, you'll, um, you'll want to keep track of your cup. 
so that one people know whose drink to poison, but also just <laughs> so they um, yeah. so you can keep track of it. The more drunk you get, you know, like exactly. Pat, Pat Monahan's got his written on like a crayon with his crayon writing, you know, and everyone knows that's Pat Monahan's cup. Yeah, honestly, that's probably this is pro- that, that one's probably like the least questionable song on the whole album. Like the okay. I didn't t- I didn't touch on the verses. Like they're just ge- generic, you know. Um, this moment slipping away, you know, this is the night, you know, stuff like that. It's really it's, generic. La- it's, shit. it's serviceable, you know? Um, but then you have to play that song. That's the second one. Have you heard the song? I haven't heard anything from this record, dude. Like, okay. I've see, this, nothing. This, this is the, this is the hit quote unquote. And by say, I say quote unquote, because it hit number 41 at its peak. Thankfully, <laughs> it's not a top 40 hit. This is is the worst song on the album to me because it basically insults anyone who's ever played or wrote or done anything with music ever. Yeah. Let le, you know, and I'm I'm kind of going to be doing a more long winded version of Buck of Dose Buckley's musical autopsy on it. But these are just thoughts I've had off for a while. Um, let me just uh, read this. Hey, Mister DJ, when you gonna spin it? My baby's favorite record. She's been waiting for a minute. She invited all her friends, and I'm buying all the rounds, and they're all dolled up. DJ, please don't let me down. So what that tells me is that you're just gonna invade this guy's playlist that he had specifically curated for the day. Maybe there is a request sheet, but he's just trying to cut in line and just not let this guy do his freaking job. Yeah. Honestly, where it gets to me even more is the second verse, and I'm kind of breezing through it because, you know, I don't want to recite all the lyrics on this whole album, but this is yeah. the one, this is the song I have the most contempt for. Okay. Hey, Mr. Guitar, when you gonna strum it? My girl just heard this song, and you should play it because she loves it. Can you get me off the hook? Get them fingers plucking now. I'll throw some money in your cup. Mr. Please don't let me down. What is he, Dr. fucking Seuss? <laughs> like, what the, what the fuck are these lyrics? Oh, the places Pat Monahan will go to please his gal. Like Har- he'll harass any uh busker this side of whatever place in San Francisco they'll allow him to stay at. <laughs> For real, like what the you know, I've covered a song here and there for a thing, and y- you got to take a second to learn chords. And this is the part confusing me because this guy's been a musician for like twenty years at this point. He knows how learning a song works. Yeah, there's a possibility he hasn't heard this song that he's talking about. You yeah. haven't specified what song it is. Like, there's a chance that maybe this guy just doesn't like this song and he doesn't want to play it. Yeah. So, but hey, I'll give you a quarter that I had in my pocket. Dance, monkey. I'll give you some loose change if you play the entirety of uh, Led Zeppelin Two. <laughs> yeah, um, if you play if you play all of Train's self titled debut, I'll uh, I'll give you some change. Like play my cover of Whole Lot of Love. <laughs> Spe- like do the Train version of this revered Led Zeppelin classic, please. Um, uh, the chorus also interpolates heart and soul. Why? Is that the song he wants them to play? <laughs> Who walks up to a guitarist and goes, Will you play Heart and Soul? There's no guitar in that song. <laughs> Will you play Heart and Soul by the pal? Please. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm saying, you know, like the, the song that like everyone learns on piano, like the first week, you know, that. Oh, not to pow. Okay, okay. No. Oh, that 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 would, that would, I mean, he already mentioned Mister Mister. That's not out of the realm of possibilities. It's not. That's why. That's why I was like, he mentions to pow's heart and soul. I love that song, <laughs> but I, I, <laughs> they get played a lot on VH1. I guess they've been watching their one hit wonder lists. <laughs> um, but but no, I'm talking about you know da 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 da. Yeah. You know that. Um. Anyway, <laughs> I like your version more. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I should remake that song with that. That <laughs> make is it, that's make it all genius. about to pal's heart and soul. <laughs> hey, s- sir, on the guitar, can you please cover uh this to pal deep cut? Yeah, this to pal one song. <laughs> you know that B side, right? Just okay. give a little heart and soul. You know. <laughs> okay, th- then you have the- okay. Then you have uh the news. Um, which it actually has kind of a cool vibe. It has like some weird like synth modulation in like some of the in like this thing after the chorus, like almost gives me like, gives me, like a Robert DeLong kind of vibe. Uh, but okay. then, so like 
instrumentation has got kind of, also like a darker kind of vibe to it and i and i see the title like the news and i was thinking like oh god is he gonna go political um thankfully he doesn't okay um but what, what the song starts with is the setup of you know there's this girl kind of coming on to him and it's like she's driving him crazy you know typical stuff but then it goes into this thing about how like people on the news are going to be talking about how crazy he is for how he feels right now and it just gets blown to proportions that it's not really a proportional response to what was happening so it's just like this weird fundamental thing i don't know how else to put it he like over dramatizes how he feels in like this darker backdrop for the band yeah and and the funny thing is that i was listening when i was going on a walk when i was first listening to this i just heard the chorus baby turn on the news they're talking about me like i'm going crazy and i think like is he about to get like self-aware about (laughs) his about the reception (laughs) to his recent work and they're gonna is he gonna talk about how he's not a thug is he gonna talk about his hefty d- promotion deal he got his for hefty that amount line? of unshaved chest hair yeah <laughs> but then there's a are you following local five or cnn they're they asked me for my next of kin oh i'm a reckoning they think that they should lock me in a rubber room and then make sure i don't hurt myself or someone else or even worse a nurse is he trying to rap because like he writes his verses no well, well well no i mean i'm spe- i'm kind of speaking through it but well, like, no, but, the, like... That, but, but like everything from make sure to a nurse it's like it like it's like it goes over and then into like taking up two lines of the liner notes so it's like it's just so awkwardly structured <laughs> so it's like it's weird like i don't so much want to review a pat monahan album as i just want to sit him down for a basic songwriting intervention <laughs> and just just Show him. Okay, l- what listen, it means listen, to be a uh, Pat. Your your con- your contemporaries are here. Uh, Rob Thomas, Ryan Adams, <laughs> Adam Duritz. <laughs> We're here to help. We we care about you, Pat, and we want to see you better. We want you to write good songs, or at least ones that are sane. Yeah, we want you to make sense with your lyricism. That's all we want. Okay, next up is a uh, lottery. Yeah. Which is uh it's it's like an art basic thing, you know, like I have this I have this girl and she's great. She makes me feel like I won the lottery. <laughs> you uh, know. Yeah. And it's just and it's just got like a bunch of cheesy awkward dad produ- lyrics. And it's also, it also got a, it's got also got a couple awkward production things, like the vocal melodies and how it's constructed, because it basically repeats the same thing twice over its like two and a half minute runtime. If you look in the liner notes here, it's like the entire thing is written in these two syllable fragments. So it's like I want you to know that the love I have for you right now is deep and real and right, and it will be after tonight. And it's just as awkward as I'm making it sound. Like, is that how it's delivered on the song? Well, not not exactly. It's like, it, it, it's like he's trying to. It's like there's a kick drum on four on the floor kind of thing going on, and he's trying to make it sync up with the with the with the offbeat on it, and it's just really awkward because like it's funny like i remember a while ago i'm just remembering a while ago i was listening to a podcast it might have been i don't know something something but uh cory taylor was on it Mm -hmm. um and he was talking about how uh one of his pet peeves when it comes to lyric when it comes to uh songwriters is when they stop like in the middle of a sentence you know and then continue this that sentence on the next line like it doesn't sound natural yeah and that kind of thing like really clicked for me here yeah (laughs) because it's just like yeah like given that i'm i'm actually dabbling in songwriting myself like not just rapping it's it's a challenge like i can see why sometimes people you know they'll try songwriting but i i've grown more of a respect for those that write songs and like make them great like i have so much respect for like pop songwriters because they they want to make a song sound catchy without making it sound cheesy and i've realized it's a hard line to toe sometimes and like i'll admit i feel like i've written like at least one good song in my life right now but i mean it's that was hard like writing songs is a challenge but pat monahan just doesn't fucking get it like he doesn't anymore at least because again like occasionally he'll come through with something but it's just you gotta dig you really gotta dig. Yeah, and that's, that's especially a on this album. <laughs> especially in this case, that's just because this. like e- I'll, I'll get into it in then, but like even my favorite song here has some of the weirdest lines on it. 
the next song, uh, Working Girl, this is another one that you gotta untangle some serious, or that, that, that brings up a lot of questions, because we're getting into, like, gender politics on this one. So it so basically it starts off harmless enough. It's with a nice enough message. It's about a girl that is like, "Hey, I'm I'm working, you know, I got a job, I'm independent, I'm equal and all that, and if you don't like that, then let me get the door for you, you know?" Yeah. And it's like it's it's admirable. It's it's progressive seemingly. Hashtag you know, left wing politics. I get you. Hashtag cuck. <laughs> On top of everything, Pat, you're a cuck. <laughs> a beta cuck. <laughs> Just, I like how your mic keeps popping around cuck. Like, you cuck. <laughs> like, it's, it's so... This is why I don't get a pop filter. <laughs> Specifically you for the word cuck. cuck. I wouldn't be surprised if he tried to use the word cuck on the next album to sound cool. We'll have no <laughs> idea what it means. I want to be like, hip with the kids. I'm a, I'm a cuck for you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no you stranger. Know that's I'm in your his cuck. Head. You know. <laughs> oh, that's oh, that's beautiful, Pat. And that sounds like something. As sad as that, that sounds like something Pat Monahan would try. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so so with working girl. So like the first thing of this before the chorus is uh she is like from the point of view of the girl and the f- second part has some kind of cheesy stuff you know if you want a back and forth thing get yourself a boomerang and if you don't like the bacon I bring and it's, it's like you know so it brings back to the theme so it's generally agreeable so far it's odd but you know it's trained so I can I can overlook that <laughs> but then it go but then after that she says I can love I can love you like you never been and keep you going just like Ritalin. But if you ain't a working man, let me get the door for you. So, what this is the first question I have. So, does she want the ability to be the breadwinner in the family? Or does she only approve of a relationship where both people are working? Because because that because that isn't really... It, it's really confusing what, like, spin on feminism is being presented here. I could see what he's trying... Like he, I feel like it's the first sentiment. I th- I feel like it's the first sentiment, but that is really awkwardly worded. But then, like the guy she's talking to, like what what is this guy's issue? Is it that she he feels the need to be this alpha that does all the work and won't let her uh make her own way, or is he a bum that won't get a job himself? Like I don't get a sense of the characterization in this thing, Pat. Explain. Yeah. It's a little that's a little that's a little funky. Um well and like that's what I mean though. Like Pat Pat Monahan doesn't know how to genuinely put himself in a in a in a frame of mind of another character because he barely puts himself in a good frame of mind when it comes to himself. You know, basically. like uh and, and then like the chorus is ju- is basically him repeating, I'm in love with a working girl. But the thing is that like it's just so like bombastically done with like the the sort of electronic buildup going on. Yeah, it doesn't really pay off, but that's a production thing. It's just so like, yeah, this girl has high standards for me. <laughs> you know, like it, it, it's just a weird thing to have this celebratory tone about. It's more like a okay, cool compromise. You know, she's doing things for herself. Like that's more of like a that's cool. I admire it. Not like a woo, my life is made kind of thing it's yeah just, it struck me as weird well, um that but 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 where it gets especially and i don't use terms like this very often but problematic <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah and, and and then that chorus like he kind of flips that around and says you know she she said if you don't like it let me get the door for you and it's like also in this kind of weird like proclaiming tone so it's like is it like this weird masochistic thing you have going on now <laughs> Like, she's threatening to leave me. That's so attractive. That's great! My life might be ruined if I don't get my shit together. I can Fucking write an awesome. album about it! Oh, um, Pat. Pat, buddy. Yeah, um, okay, okay, uh, let me see here. So then, again, the, the second part is from the point of view of him, and then it starts off nicely. Again, it starts off okay. Like, I ain't like the mother men who think they matter because they own a Benz. They left you sick. I'm your medicine. You know, it's like, I'm going to be this refreshing guy for you. Yeah. You know, that understands you more. Cool. This is the kicker. After everything we've been already saying. 
And baby, let me ease your mind. I know you've been working overtime, and if you want to leave behind the 9 to 5 and see inside a real man. So, the, well, the main takeaway is that I've never seen a song. This isn't the worst song on the album. I'm more content for play that song. But I've never before seen a song so effectively destroy its own purpose. Yeah. <sighs> you, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of that SNL skit from the season. Yeah, I'm not sure if you've seen it. But uh, it's, but it's basically this, this sort of pre- film thing where uh cecily where like uh this girl played by cecily strong is going is, is at a bar and then there there's a guy that approaches her and like starts talking about how you know progressive and feminist he is and then uh he asks if they want to come back to his house and have sex she says no and then he's like well okay then bitch <laughs> and then it's just this and you know it's kind of an escalation with a few different things yeah uh and i'm just getting that some same kind of vibe where he's like it's like, yeah, cool, I'll go I'll go along with this. Oh, and by the way, if you do want us to get back to those archetypes, I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we can we can still play it like it's 1955. You don't need a job with me. I'm Pat Monahan. I mean, listen, listen, baby, I'm interpolating heart and soul. I'm all open to that kind of stuff. <laughs> I'm channeling the basics, like the basics of human society. You know what I mean? The basic original fundamentals. Yeah, not so much the fundamentals of songwriting or mental stability, but hey, you can't can't can't, can't win them all. No, one well, out one out one out of three ain't bad. It's it's funny that we're talking about Pat Monahan because like as we're talking about Pat Monahan and his like lack of comprehension of basic songwriting, it reminds me that one of my favorite artists of all time has never been that coherent of a lyricist. I mean, he can be, and when he is, it's amazing. But fucking Beck, yeah, like, Odalay. But, here, but the thing is that he's never tried. It, it's like it's it's so weird that it doesn't sound like a lot of the time like he's trying to make. Doesn't sound like he's trying to make a point. Well, no, know? but like, well, like when he does try to make a point, like on like his emotional shit, he can still make a point. Yeah, like, Beck is a competent fucking like songwriter. morning face type stuff. Yeah, like he, but like when more often than not. He writes shit like fucking Devil's Haircut. What the fuck is that song even about? Like, who knows? What is a Devil's Haircut? Or like anything on Midnight Vultures. Yeah. Well, Midnight Vultures is about fucking. Like, it's a whole album about sex. Yeah, and but it's a you joke. still, you know, you still got like nicotine and gravy. That's it's like, like it. That. Well, still, but that's like where, um, where, where it's like he just pulled out. He he just found w- weird words that rhyme. You know, and <laughs> m- tried to make them a pickup lines. Like that's yeah. that's that's the point Here's of the, the song. Point. But like. Even so, then, like, you can do crazy right. Uh, yeah, but the thing is that the thing is that I feel like he's he's. You can tell that Beck is at least aware that he's crazy and is making the most of it. Yeah, There's I mean he's Scientologist, so we don't know how self-aware about that he really is. But, exactly. Uh, I digress. But like you know, Pat Monahan, he's just a. He's but see, just a... honestly, bet- between the two, if turns out Pat was the one that was Scientologist, that's the one I would believe more. Well, yeah, because Beck is at least has a shroud. He has a modicum of normalcy with his more sincere work, you know. I mean, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we uh, went to Pat's house and he had just just uh, crates and crates of Dr. Bronner soap. <laughs> he's he's a fan of the soap, but the difference is he but, drinks uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like taking all the wrappers from it and like plastering them all over his wall. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and and like the next album will be just this spoken. Well, he will just be putting this spoken word album to music, basically. <laughs> yeah, and, be... and it would and it would still be more sane than most of this album. Yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, then we got, then next song, Silver Dollar. It's probably the most blatant filler here. Like it means absolutely nothing. So I'm gonna skip it. Okay. Um, funny thing is that like the song didn't download when I went on a walk to listen to it for the first time. And I miss, I really miss nothing. It's just, it's just filler. Then you got, uh, Valentine. And we were going back to, you know, weird 50s stuff. So, like, the first line of this song is, My Funny Valentine. Which, which was like, that is already a song. Yeah. Yeah. That's, like, that's already a song. 
and the rest of it is just usual, you know, I'll always be by your side, you know, baby, you're my valentine, never gonna say goodbye, you know, it's just general, but it's just that little part of it, and plus, you know, the back, the instrumentation is just, like, this horrible attempt at, like, doo-wop, and, like, <laughs> 50s style, and it's just... So, kind of like so what, uh, what Rihanna did on her last album. It's 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 Megan Trainer style doo wop. Yeah, yeah, I'll put uh, it like that. This is a Megan Trainer song, but uh, a lot a lot less catty. Uh, well, it's Pat Monahan. I don't think he knows how to be catty. Well, I mean, he did spend a whole song trying to find ways to tell people his girlfriend died as a way of lying because she dumped pathetic. him. That's because he's pathetic. Like, that's not him being catty. The, I felt like, like the tone for that song just seems like a guy scrambling to make it sound like, oh, she, yeah. she, she didn't leave me. She just, she, but, oh, yeah, she died. You're right. Yeah, you're right. That's the closest thing. That's the closest thing I can come up with. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, there there aren't really many bitter breakup songs. You know, the closest thing I can think of is like Cadillac Cadillac uh, from Bo Poop Picasso, that last album. Where, like, this end of the, one of the verses is, like, screw you, I'm gonna go home and, uh, stay on my computer, which basically implies he's just gonna go watch porn. He's gonna go jack off his dick. <laughs> so thug. <laughs> so gangster. So thug. Ne- so next up is a weird one. Uh, because it's also my favorite song on it, but it's also one of the weirdest, is, uh, What Good Is Saturday? Yeah. Um, so... You know, this is this actually is kind of a not a breakup song, but it's like about about, about missing a girl, maybe because you know it's a long distance thing or something. I don't know. Because she um, died, but, she but left like, him on Yom Kippur. <laughs> but it's like it's like no. Uh, <laughs> did you take offense to that line, by the way? No, I didn't take offense to that line. I just thought it was dumb. I just thought it was stupid as hell. <laughs> just sa- saying that, saying that to David Hasselhoff, hoping he'll understand in the middle of that supermarket. For real, <laughs> I just. And he just had a rabbi right there as he was saying it. Which yeah, made, like, like I guess that makes it okay. Whatever. He just um again. He's anyway, an so, anyway, so 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 what good is Saturday? Uh, it's, I guess it's about like a girl coming back next week. So so he's, she's like, oh, without you, what good is Saturday? You know, that's kind of the general thing about yeah. it. Um, but I want to point out a few lines. Um, I made you French toast and coffee. Come over. When you gonna come back to California, baby? I'm hungry. But it's like you made the French toast. Yeah. So it's like, if it's for her, then it's going to go bad. If it's yeah. for you, then eat it. Yeah, just eat your food. That's how food, that's how food works. That's how food works, Pat. <laughs> it's, it's weird because, again, like, instrumentation-wise, it's actually really, it's really, it's really cool, actually. It's got kind of a smooth vibe going on. It's got a nice little ryth- rhythmic pattern going on with the snare. It's maybe one of the least train-like songs on here, but I don't mind that exactly. Um, at least from instrumentation point of view. But it's also one of the least fundamentally cohesive songs on here so like you also got your mail is piling up i heard the weather's rough i know your mom is going crazy like always crying you a river like salt lake a river like salt lake a river like salt lake <laughs> those are two what? different types of bodies of water. water pat it's right there. River. The words are two. They're, they're two words apart. It's not even consistency in, over the course of the whole song. It's right there. Even if you, even it's if right you there. said, even if you threw a cliche in there like the Nile, that would be more logical than Salt Lake. Yeah, I mean, like, and it doesn't necessarily totally rhyme with always. You know. No, it's a near rhyme. Uh, maybe you you could have said crying you a river like the Nile hay and it yeah. would would worked better or even like the Nile babe uh, and also the chorus has a weird thing like because I was up all night thinking about your homemade dishes fantasizing all those kisses you know it 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 makes sense but at the same time it's like the first thing you mention is their dishes are you talking about like her cooking because seems like you're already doing pretty fine on the cooking front <laughs> you made French toast like. You that's don't need not, her to make you French that's toast. Not, that's not, and that's not scrambled eggs. That's not like a basic thing that a lonely college kid makes. I would no. know. Yeah, exactly. French toast. Like you, you sit down, you you season it, you cook it, you you put it on the stove. Like it you seem to be doing fine. You seem to be doing fine. And it's like washing dishes because that is an entry. That that that's not too hard. It's just kind of tedious. Yeah. Does she does she hem dishes? 
Does at she, home? Does she like? And, did, and, and 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 even in that case, they would already be at home. Did she take all those with her? See what I'm saying? This album raises so many questions. None of them are answered, and I'm just pissed off. It's okay, Mark. I the more we talk about it, the more I'm intrigued to listen to it. You should just to just to. I want your follow up. Okay. Uh, but, but again, we gotta keep going here. We're not even at the weirdest line in this song. Okay. Hey, it's me again. Don't know how long it's been. I just sent you a picture of me and Rover. Ten emojis hung over. Baby, I'm lonely. Pat. <laughs> how old is Pat Monahan? How old is Pat Monahan? He's he's at least forty. I'm gonna look this up. Pat Monahan. He's been he's been making music for twenty over twenty years. Yeah, I'm gonna look at this. I'm gonna look at how old Pat Monahan is. <laughs> He has three kids. Yeah, I, I bet he does. How old is Pat Monahan? He's almost 50 years old. That man is 48. <laughs> I... <laughs> you sound like a grandpa, Pat Monahan. You sound like a sad grandpa. You're talking about jerking your old man penis, sending emojis on the dog. You are a sad, sad man. Stop writing music. And here's the thing. I was talking about the weirdest line in the song... I was not talking about that. What are you talking about? Because that line's terrible. Think George is coming by to help me kill some time. I know you worry about me when I'm with Lopez. Something always seems to get broken. I'll fix it on Sunday. So in this song, we have French toast, salt lake, <laughs> emojis, and George Lopez's clumsiness issues. And it's still my favorite song on the album. Pat Bonhan. Stop writing music. You're a sad man. You're a Stop. weird sad man. <laughs> maybe the news was right. <laughs> maybe the news. Maybe you need to listen to the news, Pat Monahan, and just stop. Listen to Huey Lewis, okay? He's, he knows what he's talking about. He knows that it's hip to be square, but you are not square. You are way past square. The weird thing is that, is that you know, so much of this of this album when it gets into cliche territory mm. is like hokey, but he like. You wish you could do Hokey as well as Huey Lewis. He nails that. Yeah. He knows. He knows how to write a song. You don't, Pat Monahan. You are a weird man. I don't like you. I don't like how you write songs. <laughs> this is why, like... <laughs> this is why I don't listen to Train. Like, people are like... Like, I've seen people on Twitter, like, talking about the new Train album. And I think, why are you wasting your time with the new Train album? Well, see, I know that's that what that, that, that leads back to my initial point. It's like what it's like the music equivalent of watching The Room or Birdemic. It's fascinating. But like those movies are fascinating more than just for Tommy Wiseau's performance. He wrote as far as The Room goes. He wrote and he directed that movie. Like that is a passion project. Pat Monahan is a crazy person with a lot of yes men. He is the white Kanye West. Okay? <laughs> that is who Pat Monahan is. Only the difference is people don't like him. People don't like Pat Monahan. Uh, well, I mean, they have a cruise, so they gotta get, have some kind of cult following. I but... mean, he is the man. He's the new leader of the new generation of Spaceship Earth. Like he is, <laughs> Pat Monahan is that man. Cruise ship Earth. Yeah, that's the spinoff. <laughs> it don't make sense now. <laughs> he's drinking the soaps, man. He's drinking the fucking soaps. Drinking. That's that's just it. It's not drinking the Kool Aid. It's drinking the hand soap. Yeah. That's the problem, Pat Monahan. He missed that memo. He thought when you let a cult, you just got to have a brand. And so his brand is that soap. And instead of, you know, soaking it into his skin, he's been drinking it because he's like, oh, cults, cults drinks fruit punch. I don't have that. I have soap. So I'm going to drink soap because I'm an old grandpa who doesn't understand things. Ugh. It's okay. It's made naturally. Yeah, you know, um... Okay, and let's see if there's anything else here. Oh, and there's one more. Um, cartoons ain't funny no more. Cap and Crunch case like cardboard. Keeping up with the FIFA scores, it's no fun without you. Oh, and I was up all night thinking about your so hot biscuits. <laughs> Thoughts? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't think... I do think you want to leave the equating, podcast? Equating, do you regret coming back on? No, but I... He just equated female genitalia to biscuits. 
I never look at a plate of biscuits and gravy and go, man, that looks like some delicious pussy. I'm never like, <laughs> I'm going to eat these biscuits like I'm going to eat some nice pussy. No. <laughs> well, I mean, no. It could have been, it, I mean, it could have been cooking. That seems to be a recurring thing here, but... But I mean... And by the way, so many carbs in this woman's cookbook. <laughs> Not biscuits, healthy. French toast, cap and crunch. Like, I just, I can't. You're I'm right. I'm triggered. If, you're Dude, I, pa- not, not, not only is this album insane, it's also triggering. To I, me. I can't, you're right. I can't put it to Pat Monahan to think of a metaphor, to metaphorically refer to biscuits as vaginas. He means biscuits. He's an old man. He just likes his biscuits and gravy <laughs> when he's watching Matlock. All right, that's all. That's well, all Pat FIFA. Monahan wants. FIFA, hey, FIFA, FIFA. When he's watching football, he just wants some nice biscuits and the cartoons that aren't funny anymore. Yeah, said the, said the forty-eight year old man. Like Captain Crunch. I guess Captain Crunch is a cartoon now. Like but I know no, it no, tastes. No, like- no, he's, he said Captain Crunch tastes like cardboard because he's eating the box. All right, he he forgot his glasses <laughs> that day. He forgot to put his contacts in, so he started eating Captain Crunch and he was eating the box. That's the problem. <sighs> He just need- oh my god, dude! I'm 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 losing it. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, this is why I need to get back to reviewing. I need to talk about this stuff with people because this is this is solving all of my anxiety. Pat Pat Monahan, right now. Uh, if you're listening, get help. Get help, buddy. <laughs> we're we're pulling through through for you. You need to write more more classic hits like uh like Mister Mister Meet Virginia. <laughs> That one's, I, I mean, like, sure, it drops to Jupiter, just talked about, I mean, I miss when the strangest line in a train song was just fried chicken. Yeah, yeah. Before we move on to the last couple songs, let me, by contrast, show you the weirdest song lyrically on their first album. I just want to pull it up here for a second, okay. just for contrast. Okay. The weirdest song lyrically on the first train album is called Idaho. Thanks Texas, are you my friend? You live so close to the end. Texas, are you my friend? Because I'm afraid of you. Hey, Maine, hey, you're a little too high for me. And Florida, you're a little too low. DC, you could be the end of me. I think I'm moving to Idaho. See, that's not, that's, that's at least, that has a theme. That has coherence. It can at least make sense as a, as a kid song. Like, it's cheesy as fuck, but it's at least, it has a theme, it has an idea. He's not talking about biscuits and Cabin Crunch and George Lopez. He's and talking about salt, places. And the, and the Salt Lake River. Yeah. He's talking and about- again, let me stress with all of that in this one song, What Good Is Saturday, still my favorite song here. Why? Again, I, I mean, I don't know. It, it could be between this and Drink Up, but it's like the production's really good uh, by comparison by train standards. I just um so I, it's like, and it's like I guess it's like it crosses over from just being bad lyrically into again just being something you have to witness. <laughs> you say that with such passion. You have to witness. <laughs> they should put the train tran- they should put they should put this liner note booklet in like the Smithsonian <laughs> and have people and have people study it. No, okay, they need to study uh, Monahan's brain. Okay, now let's uh, go on to uh, the next song here. Um, the next song is called Lover Man. This is my second least favorite song behind uh, Play That Song, probably. It's one of three songs that I scored in, like, the three range. Okay. Because um, I, I did it individually. Uh, what Good Is Saturday is, like, the craziness, like, like everything. I, I, I ended up pushing that, like, barely into seven territory. Um, this one, I want to show you. Actually, I want to link you the song. And I want you to hear the chorus of this and tell me what it reminds you of because I haven't thought of a name exactly. Just play like maybe the first like 15 seconds or so. I don't know. Basically the part that's just like the intro. Yeah. Remember, it's going to play through my speakers. So. Right. And add. Hey, and add on YouTube. That's pretty rare nowadays. Hey, oh. <laughs> this has such a bad dislike ratio. All night long I wait for my lover man. Wait for my lover man. Wait for my lover man. All night long I wait for my lover man. Cause only my lover man can. I've been out to see so oh, long. Jesus, no, Pat. Fuck off. Sure <laughs> no. Ah, God sure damn. Go away! Me. I closed the window! <laughs> It's still going. Oh, what? okay. I closed the <laughs> you window. Have to get you, man. 
Pat Monahan, leave me alone. You hold me instead. Um, I, I know what you mean, but I can't put my finger on it either. You know, it's some weird amalgamation of like, I've been working on the railroad, like the Candyman can, <laughs> like, like all kinds of weird public domain stuff. Like, this is tying back to the heart and soul thing, but, like, to the nth degree. Yeah, that was... And, the- and, and the, here's the sad thing. This is the only feature spot on the album, and this Priscilla person singing, the last thing I remember her from is the B.O.B. song, John Doe, which is, like, one of the few good songs on that Underground Luxury album. It's this thing about alcoholism, and she does a really good job on that chorus. And I heard that, and I was like, she's probably going places. Nope. Poor Priscilla. <laughs> Poor Priscilla. You're on a train album. I just, I feel so bad. You're... Yeah. You, you deserve more than that. Yeah, and, and then you heard, and, like, this is, like, also, like, the most straining of any tr- song on here from Pat. You heard that little bit there. It, was, <laughs> it, 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 it scared, scared you. It's, because it, it's also, like, not, like, the kind of, it's not a good enough vocal melody to have it be a cappella like that for the first little bit. So you can't quite follow along with it. So, like, no matter what the drums do after that, it doesn't feel right. Yeah, that was just, that was horrible. And again, Mark. not getting in, that's not even getting into the lyrics where it's just like, Pat is this lover man that this girl is waiting for to come back. Honestly, lyrically, it's not really that horrible, but it's just like, everything I just described around it is just so, ugh. <laughs> no, there's another, there's another thing that Melanie reminds me of. I know, like, I can't quite put my finger on it. It's, it's some oh, kind of nursery rhyme. She ain't what she used to be, ain't what she used to be. It's like a fucking, like, that. Oh, yeah. It's that. Yeah. So, again, like, weird Midwest stuff it's, for that demo. It's so, like... Um, okay, uh, so you got that. Um, that is maybe my second least favorite song, just, just, like, on a pure, like, tolerance level, you know? Yeah. And then, honestly, the last two songs are, like, two of the least, like, objectionable like, that's the weird thing. Like, also the thing with California 37 is that, like, for all the craziness on that one, like, the last two songs on it are actually pretty good. Yeah. Um, keep in mind, with everything he's been saying earlier, now he's trying to take on, like, this wise, elder, fatherly role. Yeah. In, imparting life advice. Because he's a grandpa. <laughs> he's trying to be a grandpa. And, uh, Lost and Found, um, it, it, there's really nothing to say about it, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip it. Okay. And then you got you better believe, which sounds nice, like production wise, it's got a nice build to it, I suppose. But the one thing is that for some reason, even though the title spells out the word "you," in the liner notes, it uses the the letter "u." Just be hip to the kids, you know. Pat Monahan knows what kids like, but it's he knows not the, the title kids are nowadays. So and it's like repeated so much over the course of the of these liner notes that it's, it's so distracting. <laughs> it's just a bunch of you. Like this, this is the first time where I thought a song was pretty good, and then reading along with it in the liner notes was detrimental for reasons other than the lyrics. <laughs> it's because Pat Monahan he doesn't, he he gets the kids. You know, Mark, you're just out of touch with the kids. He knows that kids love that letter U. You know. <sighs> what more is there to say? Uh, I'm, I'm, I gotta be honest, I'm probably gonna make this a, its own episode. Cause I didn't mean for this to go on as long as it did, but I'm so glad it did. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a problem. Pat, Pat Monahan must be stopped. And with he your donation indeed. today to the Pat, Stop Pat Monahan from Songwriting Fund, we can, we can end <laughs> the, the long standing career of the once mediocre, now horrifyingly terrible songwriter <laughs> that is Pat Monahan. He and needs to, help. And we can reunite him with that guitarist that kind of looks like Howie Mandel, cleanse him of his sins with a different kind of soap. <laughs> and and bring him some purity in his name under the name of the Lord that is Anthony all Fantana. One, all one, all one. Oh, Christ. I would want to see a review from Fantano on this album so badly. I would love to see him just do a parody review like he did with Limp Bizkit. Like when or he like made, with, or, or or like with a uh, with that Rick Ross one, yeah. Or or you can just do a Big Sean thing, you know? Yeah. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. I can see that. Yeah. With Train, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> well, I guess that uh, sums. We're about a bit over two hours, but again, I'm probably going to divide this into multiple parts and just title this episode "Mark Explains Train to Johnny." 
<laughs> we're gonna we dissect the the art of dissecting. Yeah, you, uh, you know, and, and I don't have, don't have too much of an issue with that because you know it's kind of like one of those like midnight screening episodes with Brad Jones where it's like. Like one of them is explaining the movie to the other, and then like the other person can still give legitimate criticism from well, what yeah. they're hearing. Because like I just this is the same thing. Yeah, it's it's very comparable. Yeah, thanks, um, Mark, for giving me a taste of uh, the insanity that is Pat Monahan extended. <laughs> and I thought, and again, I thought this would peak when they covered all of Led Zeppelin too. Insanity can surprise you, Mark. It can be a surprising thing. So yeah, um, safe to say this tops uh, Pink Season as my least favorite of 2017 so far. Oh yeah, you didn't like Pink Season too much. Well, I I talked about it. Uh, yeah, I talked about it a couple episodes ago with with uh, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, I gave that a 5.5. This one averages out to a 4.5. You, um, for, a gr- for a girl, a bottle, a boat, in all lowercase. Yeah, that's that's also really bad. No, um. We don't got to get back into Pink Season. I'm. I this a- this album makes me like the Weezer song Trainwrecks less because that's the title. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, that's like my three least favorite albums of 2017 so far. You got Train, you got Pink Guy, and you got Flaming Lips. Um, mine are. I'm looking through. Although More Life is on my list here, so never saying it. So you know, I could maybe make a top five worst albums of the year. This year, unlike last year, who knows? Oh, I did a top ten. I I made a top uh, twenty last year. I could probably still do that For this worst? year. Yeah, I didn't put it on. I, huh, I didn't, I didn't put see it that. Um, wow. I made it, but then I I just did the top fifty best. Um, I can link you my top twenty worst. Yeah, but yeah, we're getting off to a hell of a start here. And of course, this album was released in January. Yeah. Well, I mean, if I were to give you like a top three worst for me, it would be the new AFI, the new Bush. And... Oh, you know what? Oh, speaking of Bush, I gotta say, I just got the weirdest. I just, I just got the notification this morning. Yeah, Gavin Rossdale is now following me on Twitter. I saw that. I I liked that, and I liked your other tweet below that. Yeah, <laughs> about how I wonder if he if he got into my content through all the, the things I've said about this is what the truth feels like. Yeah, and things that like now I feel an obligation to review the new Bush album. It's not good, dude. You're gonna that lose could him get as a me, That could get. Uh, I mean. Like, I could invite him on the podcast to discuss it. I don't know. I mean, that would be cool, because I like Bush. I just didn't like the I haven't album. heard any full Bush albums. I meant to, because uh, back in 2014, I meant to do, like, a best albums in 1994 thing, and I wanted to brush up on a lot of the biggest albums from that year. And I so got Sixteen music. Stone for a bit, but then I didn't. I never got around to it. Uh, I mean, yes. It was a great year in music, so I don't know if I don't know if Sixteen Stone would be on there, because it the 94 was a I great fucking year in music. Um, yeah, good point. As for you know, I'd binge on on whatever you know. Oh yeah, I had a few big songs on it. I mean, I haven't heard a Bush song since uh, the Sound of Winter. I remember thinking that one that one's okay. I mean, it's just it's it's very radio rock. Well, the the new but... record is just weird. Like it's it's very atonal in like a bad way. Like it's just. The mixes are all buried under interesting okay, ideas. So, okay, so, so so they're not trying to get back on the radio then. I mean, I don't know. I like, mean, at the very least, that's kind of admirable. It's got catchy ideas, but like they're not delivered in a way that's holistically appealing. I I mean, I I again, I I I'll put it down on the list. I might get around to it. And uh, if I mean, if 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 uh, Gavin is a reasonable enough man, I'm sure he'll understand. And yeah. He might just say that you're too young to understand. You don't get it. You don't get it because uh, you're too young. You don't understand. Is, is wait, who is older, Gavin Rossdale or Pat Monahan? Uh, Pat Monahan. Gavin, how old is Gavin Rossdale? But he's not that old. Yeah, because they've been around since like since early '90s too. So, holy shit, he's older. He's older. Really? He's 51. Really? Why are these guys starting bands when they're 30? I don't know. This is strange. And we were just talking about the lyrics of a train album. Well, so the, for me, I'd still be impressed. Yeah, well, no, like the lyrics on the Bush album aren't bad. They're just very whatever. Like they're just kind of yeah, there. Yeah, I, I mean, like black and white, rainbows, contradiction. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm staying open, Gavin. If if you're listening to the podcast, you know, I I I I've played glycerine on guitar a couple times. You, you know, know? I, I I'm more happy. I'm happy for you than that or over that. 
because the the one guy, the famous '90s guy that I have following me is the singer for the Spin Doctors. Oh so, yeah, you told me about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all, and, and you know what? And the thing is that I wouldn't be making as big a deal about this if it seemed like he was just spam following and he was following like you know because occasionally you'll, you'll get followed by someone that's also following like two million people. Yeah, but. He, but he's following like just under ten thousand, so I'm thinking maybe he does look through that Twitter feed. Maybe, know? maybe, maybe. And and I did recently retweet someone from Anna Kendrick where she said, "Anyone who follows more than a thousand people, explain yourselves." And I kind of agree with that. But you know, I guess if you are the the front man of Bush, ten thousand people in your circle isn't that unreasonable. Listen here, Mark. I follow over a thousand people on Twitter. Explain yourself. I fall. I did. I, exp- I I replied to that tweet. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're embarrassing me. I uh I follow almost 1,200 people on Twitter. But see, that's not so much. That's not that's not that much. That many more than a thousand. That's uh, almost you 200 know? individual people over a thousand. Oh, now you're thinking about individual people. I'm just saying, like, I no, I look at it like that. Like, I follow, I follow that many people because one, I really like Twitter, like, and I love having a very diverse feed. Like, my feed is is nothing but shit posting, friends, Smash Mouth memes, some some of those. Hey, and, you know, uh, you know what? I just realized Smash Mouth gets all the 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 glory. As far as the ironically making fun of and also celebrating how corny they are, why does Train get none of that? What do you mean? Like they should be put on that same pedestal as Smash Mouth. But that's because Smash Mouth embraces it. Smash Mouth embraces it, you know. But we didn't know that at one point. The memes had to come before the reaction to the memes. Well, but that's also because I mean I don't think you remember how big All Star by Smash Mouth was. I know, but I'm talking about, like, you know, the, the post-ironic stuff, you know? No, I guess I don't, I don't understand. Like, like the post-ironic, you, you know, Smash Mouth, but all the words in the song are sort of in alphabetical order. Yeah. You know, Why doesn't thing. Train get the same treatment as that? Yeah, because they deserve it. No, they don't. They, 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 Pat Monahan does not deserve He's one, he's not a good guy about it. He is not, he does not talk about the memes, I mean, you know, well, there has to be memes to begin with. Come on, people, get the, get the train going. <laughs> there are people that talk about train though. Like they're they're they are but talked it's, about. But it's like only in terms of this song sucks. But that's because they're also not as they're not so not as like like I said, Smash Mouth was everywhere. Like they were everywhere for a nostalgic thing. Like people are nostalgic for All Star. That's why they like train it. Train was everywhere twice. Their first hits don't really... They're not of the same caliber, though. Like, their first hits are infinitesimally better put together than the new stuff that they have. The new stuff... And the new stuff, it's it's very lyrical-based, whereas All Star by Smash Mouth, it's a... It's, it's just, it's, it's just you know, a delivery of somb. Yeah, it like, it's, it's a song okay. where, like... It's, I understand. Yeah. Okay, you win this round. I'll give you one point, Pat, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, uh, this was, this is, yeah, we're, we're definitely splitting this into multiple parts. Okay. Um, so, guys, uh, again, if you like what we were doing here, um, this is really the epitome of mad sounds, I'm just realizing. The title is really starting to make sense. Yeah. Um, maybe every week we should talk about, just talk about the weirdest song we heard that week. I mean, dude. That we, might be fun. We can do... I'm rolling with the I'm rolling with yeah. the punches, man. Uh, so yeah, I mean, feel free to bring this stuff to the table sometime yeah. because oh, yeah. I feel like I've I've just been venting, and you've been reacting. You've been a witness. I mean, that's 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 what I'm good at. I'm good at witnessing things. <laughs> <laughs> As the legal the legal I'm things I'm he- dealing with are privy. My to. strength is here is hearing things and reacting accordingly. Yeah, this is like the fine bros. They ain't got shit on me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are whole YouTube channels that base their channels on that. So. That's true. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, guys, if you like what we were doing here, um, subscribe on YouTube to Spinner Reviews. In addition to, like, the vinyl thing I was talking about a while back, subscribe on iTunes if you want to get this episode in the most convenient way possible. And uh, listen back to previous episodes. Uh, we're going to try to get this a little bit more consistent. I've said that maybe five times in the past year. I don't even care. 
Um, That's the goal. I, whatever helps me sleep. Consistency. At, wh- whatever helps me. Whatever helps me sleep at night. <laughs> and, folks, um, let me know your thoughts on the train album. I'm gonna start binging the reviews uh, at at some point. Um, and I'm not even sure if I should re- if I should return this a copy of the CD to the library or just uh, throw it um, on the train tracks outside my house <laughs> and and watch the train uh, destroy itself. Trains train aside. Train aside. Goodbye. <laughs> Come on down to Grandma's Spaghetti Shack. <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> Don't die. <laughs> Leave that to the train album to die. <laughs> <laughs>